Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and are you counted? Today, we are with our great, great people that are out trying to make all of this happen just for you. And this is the census, census 2020. And they will tell us what the census is about, why the census, and how it impacts you. And we need to know that you are counted. So, Annie Mae. Hi, Miss Marsha. How are great you? Name, Annie Mae. <laughs> that, is, that is such a lovely name. Thank you. And, and we have a new guest, Jesus. Uh, Annie, would you introduce Jesus and tell us, since he's the newbie on this? <laughs> Sure, yes. Jesus is our new partnership specialist, but um, I'll have him talk more about himself. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus? Jesus? Yes, aloha. My name is Jesus Arriola, and I am the Hispanic Latino partnership specialist. So I help uh, the Spanish speaking community members complete their census. Wonderful. Now, so let's tell us. Um, because Oahu, is that, I hate to say this, the Hispanic people or Latinos or both, um, is it just for you, is it just on Oahu or is for the state? For the state. For the state. So you, you're you going to go all over. Yes, ma'am. Um, yes, yeah. we'll be in Maui the first week of uh, September and we're hoping to go to Kauai and Big Island as well uh, just to help and just let everyone know about getting counted. So how are we doing with the count? Yes, we're very excited to share with you all how we are doing here um, nationwide and at the same time for the state of Hawaii. Um, nationwide, um, Today we had a self-response rate of 64.6%. Uh, and for Hawaii, we had a self-response rate of 61.5%. So I'm gonna be mentioning a lot of numbers, but just to clarify, self-response um, rate or our score, that's when people um, responded uh, voluntarily and proactively responded to the census. Um, online, over the phone, or sending back their paper questionnaire. Um, but we also have uh, what we call now the non-response follow-up, and it's been going on since July 30. Our census takers are enumerating and visiting households who have not yet responded. Um, and now, because of that effort, we have a total um, enumeration count here in the state of Hawaii of 85.3%. So, wow, yes, that's very good. 0.3% of us are already um, counted. That's great. Yes. So thank you for everyone who's been helping us making it happen. And if you are one of those who enumerated yourself and you know self-responded, thank you so much. Well, well, for our audience that may not know that we're partners with the census, and we have been here once a month for what since January? Actually, since September of September last, year. last year. Thank you wow. so much. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> you're one of our longest uh, standing partners since we started, Miss Marsha. So thank you for having us. It's great. Um, we we did respond, and yeah. like I told you early, that um, if everybody responds. And I do mean if, and I push and push and push, that if everybody responds, we would have enough for a third congressional district for three CD. And I want that because now we are only four people in the Congress, in the two senators and two in the House. So, so we'd get out the cellar if we had one more congressional district. So that's my goal with the census is to get, tell us how that's counted. How, how, who makes the decision on whether we get another 
congressional district. I noticed that some states lost congressional districts. How is that determined? It really um, depends. At the moment, we cannot really say um, if how many we're gonna get or not. It really depends on how uh, the final count in mm -hmm. after this 2020 census data field collection is done and our um, headquarters are going to process it to make sure that we have you know a complete and accurate count and then we will have the apportionment count later on. And we will know um, by December 31, um, if we gained or lose seats. So that's um, for this, you know, if the state got well, more and the apportionment seats are redistributed, but that's why it's the 2020 census, this once a decade census is so important to make sure that we have the right representation um, in Congress who can be our voice in, in the national um, government. So who makes that determination? How is that after all of this, I know goes to the president on the final day, mm -hmm. but who makes what, how is that determined? Our experts uh, in the census uh, headquarters are our statisticians and our data scientists um, will make that, you know, after everything is processed, um, that determination will be done. Yeah. Yes. And just so people understand what I just said, it, do, it doesn't matter whether the president wins or loses. He will be in office on the last day of the year. So the census is turned over to him. So just just so people don't think I'm Yeah, it papers. doesn't matter. Um, yeah, the statutory date, our deadline is December 31. And so that's why it's so important to be counted to make sure that um, our state has, you know, the best chance, you know, to get our, um, the number of seats that we deserve as a state. Yes. So now, Jesus, tell us about you. All right, Ms. Marshall, well, thank you for having us. Uh, yes, um, so I, I've been working with the community members, nonprofits and um, small businesses to try and partner to just get the word out let people know, you know, the census is here, let's get counted, and then the importance of it. You know, um, I know over the last couple months, we've gone over with everyone about how the, the federal funding comes to the communities through the census numbers, how roads and schools are, you know, built, determined on the data. And, and again, it's once every 10 years. So the data that we uh, are able to get today will determine the next 10 years. And it's really important for a lot of the community uh, programs. So, I mean, we, we see it firsthand and now we see it, m it's probably more important now than ever. And, and with that, leading into reapportionment for our legislators and as well as, you know, the importance of voting. It's the civic, civil engagement is very important so that our voices are heard and so that we can actually get programs and get the need that we get the needs and resources that we need. Let, let me add one thing I just read last, last month, I guess, in Arizona, in the 1010 census, the natives, the, the tribal people uh, were counted as other. They were not listed as Native Americans or indigenous or whatever the tribe name is. So they just were put other. Now, when we had the pandemic and they got nothing, no, nothing because they were other. So it was then that I understood that the real need, especially here where we have, um, what do you call it? Um, Hawaiians that, that said, well, they weren't Americans, so they weren't going to participate. And we have the Marshallese and the Micronesians, and they're all lumped in as Pacific Islanders. So is there, is it important, other than we saw what happened to the native in Arizona, the Native Americans, 
got nothing from this money for the COVID-19. And there was, you know, no water, no nothing. So are we, by not getting a real good count of the people that say they're not American and they don't participate, is that going to be a problem here like it is in Arizona? And the impact for this, you know, this count, definitely um, when we have an undercount and we missed out, we missed some people in the count, we don't get enough funding that goes into, again, what Jesus mentioned earlier, schools, um, water systems, healthcare, you know, hospitals. It really matters that we are included, you know, um, that you are counted and we, you know, you, we know where you are because that's when, oh, this community needs this, um, this funding, for example, language access, right? Um, Jesus and I, we work with um, a language specific community and also with everyone, but I'm a Filipino uh, speaker. So I work with a Filipino community and we wanna know where the Filipinos live, for example, because maybe, that community needs language access, more language access, so that there can be funding for language access later on, for example. So th those things matter. And we really have, I think one thing that I have to applaud the census is that they really focus on, um, you know, making sure that uh, our field staff, like people like me and Jesus, and even our census takers in the field are from the community. We speak the language of the community so that we can really reach out and communicate um, to you know, the people that we want to make sure are counted so that you know, we're not missing anyone out. Jesus, you wanna add to that? I completely agree. And it's very important. Now I'll remind everyone, it is a self-response. So it's really, you know, when you're going through the questions, you're self-responding uh, so when it comes to and I know we'll talk about this the the race or the Hispanic not Hispanic it's really up to the individual and the household to determine how they want to be represented and it does matter so when you mentioned the incident or the situation in Arizona it just goes to show how important this is and again I'll reiterate we see the need now and we see that you know, we really need correct data in order to assess and then act upon what's to come. And this is, again, for the next 10 years. So there won't be another count until 2030. So between then and now and then, it's very important to be able to know who's in our community and, and have them be heard. Um, and I think this is a very good step to start this new decade. Um, you know, we're off to a very challenging um, time where we have to be innovative and we have to think outside the box. But again, it's all going to, all the data is going to relate to what decisions are made because the data and the numbers are the foundation of the decision making. We have a question. How do you get responses from people who haven't answered because of COVID? So yeah, we would really love to talk to our community about that. Um, currently, we have our census takers doing the hard work in the field right now. Um, they are still doing door-to-door -door, um, visiting um, households who have not yet responded. However, it's not too late. Um, you can still go online um, at my2020census.gov or you can call 844-330-2020 if you wanna complete your census over the phone, or you can mail back your paper questionnaire um, to us if you don't want a census taker to knock on your door and, and get your answers. However, we want to assure um, our community that our census takers are trained um, to do this safely and we are following CDC and local um, guidelines to complete um, the interviews and enumeration in a safe manner. Um, they're gonna be wearing a mask uh, when they knock on the door, conducting the interview 
in a social distance way. Um, so we want to, you know, reassure our community that we are doing this in the safest way. However, if you you have um, the option to really just go online and do it yourself. Do you have a, a number we can put up for them to contact? Yes. A, um, a contact number? Yes, 844-330-2020. Um, that will, uh, you can immediately talk to, you know, a census representative. We also have 12 other non-English languages um, that, you know, you can access um, from our website, census, uh, 2020 census.gov. And you can um, look at the available languages there if you want to speak um, to uh, um, in, you know, your native language. Now, what about the people who don't have internet connection? How do you reach them? So they can, um, if they don't have, you know, access to internet, we have radio. Actually, we have a lot of partners helping us right now, reminding um, communities over the radio, in the airwaves, um, if they have TV, we have such a massive, um, you know, advertisements over in, you know, in cable TV, uh, you know, reminding them to respond to the census. We are, we also sent paper questionnaires. We also sent uh, postcards. Um, we are, at, we actually have seven reminders uh, to communities just so um, they, you know, since March, we've been doing this since March, since March, and you know, just to remind everyone and make sure that we don't miss out anyone. What about people that don't have street address, uh, but they have a post office box? Let's say they live on a farm. Uh, you, how do you reach those people that don't have street addresses? We actually also sent um, postcards to them, Miss Marsha, in the PO boxes. We and actually. Please. Yeah, we actually change a little bit. We have to be innovative, as Sue said, right? So we adapted and sent reminders to them. Our local partners sent reminders as well with all the information um, and ways to do and to respond to the census. We also have, um, we did the update enumeration or actually update leave enumeration where we actually, census takers left the, paper questionnaires on their back, or, you know, in, in their front porch or whatnot, so they can see it and they can just grab it and fill it out. So we really are trying our very best to make sure that we don't miss um, any household. Well, what about um, homeless people, houseless people? Yes. Are they counted? That's a big community. Are they counted? Of course. Jesus, you want to speak about that as well? Yes, of course. Yes, they are counted. They are part of our community and uh, there are different operations and, and groups that have different roles. And there are people that went out and have already built a relationship with our, our houseless communities and made sure that they had the opportunity to self-respond. And then if they didn't, they have the, the follow-up where you know, I'd like to mention that uh, we have enumerators, we have people in the field. And, you know, we just ask that you remember that these enumerators in the field are your community members. They're our neighbors, our nieces, our nephews, our, you know, aunties and uncles. They've stepped up to the call to work for and support the census. And we just want to remind the community to remember that when they come knocking at your door and, you know, know that it is a service. They're, they are there to help us get a count for our communities. So please, you know, remember that and be nice to them. Uh, <laughs> of they're course, very... this is Hawaii. Of course they're going to be nice. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, also so, to add to Jesus' um, comment as well, we actually are working with our local um, service providers who are servicing, um, who are providing services to our, um, you know, our community members who are experiencing homelessness. And we are gonna be doing a massive effort this coming September 22 to 24. Um, we will be enumerating food kit, uh, 
soup kitchens um, and other areas where our um, houses communities may be during those dates. So we are working closely with our state and local um, city governments and uh, nonprofit organizations who are working with um, homeless communities so that, um, you know. So they know the are, people. They know yes. where they are. Yeah. Because, right. yeah, they know where to go and they already have, again, that re established relationship with them. And so we can have that um, a better count. And that's going to be September 22 to 24. Okay, good. Next. Well, what about the prisons? That is under a group, we call it a group quarter enumeration. And our um, operation side, our ACO is already work, uh, also is working with our um, um, correctional facilities on that. So they will be counted um, there. Wow, this is a quite an operation. Yeah, actually group quarters were almost done, Jesus, right? I, I want to say, like, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so um, we're, we're at the end. I mean, uh, we look to complete our, our field work September 30th. So right now, you, it's more of the, the non-response follow-ups with our enumerators. So that's really, uh, we're leaning towards the end of uh, the census count. Now, um, what I've heard, the Micronesian community was living in very close quarters. And now they're talking about, because of COVID, to move them into a hotel. So do you lose those people? To get, what happens in the count? Let's assume you've already done that neighborhood. And now they're moved to a hotel. Do you lose track of them? How, what happens? Um, that's a very interesting and, you know, very timely, you know, currently happening situation, right? Um, we have like this, we actually have a na Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander Partnership Specialist, and she just um, talked to us about that um, last Monday during our meeting. So, so glad she talked to us and, you know, shared um, the current plight, plight of, you know, our Pacific Islander um, community members. Um, we are working closely with them. Um, we have partnership specialists who are making sure that they are, you know, uh, we have reached out to them and that, you know, they will be counted. Um, yeah, so it's, uh, one of our colleagues are already taking care of that situation. But thank you for bringing that up. We don't want to lose anybody. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. yeah I I'll add, I mean, um, we are counted where we were April 1st. So that's yeah. really the key date of where you, where we were. Um, and that's where, when the questionnaire asks, where were you uh, living April 1st? Or where were you staying April 1st? So that it doesn't get mixed up. Um, so that's one of the key um, points is to remember when you fill out the questionnaire. If you have questions, please, you know, feel free to call uh, that number. Uh, we have professionals available to assist you in many different languages, but yes, it is April 1st uh, count. Well, okay, now assume that you are a foreign student in a dormitory. I guess we didn't have people in dormitories April 1st, did we? Everything was locked down. I mean. But let's assume that you were in a dorm or, or you were still in school someplace and um, that's where you were April 1st, but now that you've gone back to where you were from, let's say, assume Australia, what about that person? Are they still counted or, or did we just lose them? So actually, um, early on, I think around May, our, um, the Census Bureau um, wrote to our um, university leaderships um, across the country to make sure that we don't miss the counting our college students um, during April 1st. So we are working closely with universities as well um, to make sure that um, we don't miss out, we didn't miss any of our um, students. So there's a partnership there. So even if they were foreign students, they were still counted? Yes, because we, um, yeah, the university, um, 
is helping us make sure, uh, you know, account for the students who were there. Now, okay. We, everything is so screwy. And they said they were going to stop the date early, stop the counting early. Is that still, or, or are we doing better now? So in terms of um, our end date, September 30. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so um, we are doing really well um, and we are trying to catch, make sure that our, we can be, you know, we are ready by our deadline of September 30, Ms. Marsha. Okay. Yes. And again, want to post the contact number for anybody that didn't get it the first time. The telephone number or web page or whatever, so we can reach you. Yes, just go to my twenty twenty census dot gov or call eight four four three three zero twenty twenty, and you can complete your uh, census form as well. Do, now. If I know somebody that's didn't, you know, for some reason or other missed it, as a just ordinary person, can I somehow encourage them to to do this? Or does it, as a just a neighbor or something, you know? Let's assume that I have a neighbor that has dementia. Can I, as a just ordinary person, can I help? Can I do anything? Yes, I, we encourage everyone to share about filling out the census. So we do encourage everyone to reach out to your friends, your neighbors, um, the community. And we have a lot of partners that are in our community, nonprofits and for profits. So for example, the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce Hawaii has events that are being uh, collaborated with the census just to remind people, you know, the census is very important. It, you know, it affects everything from the community, small businesses to the legislature. Um, so yes, uh, please remind your friends and family, neighbors. And at the same time, if you see some virtual events out there, uh, you might see the census is right there alongside of it. And um, we're excited to be able to, you know, just connect with our community. And especially this time where we're all in this season, um, and we're seeking community interaction and all we have accessible right now is this virtual uh, option. We want to encourage everyone to stay flexible and, and to stay connected. Um, and this is one way, right? Um, so again, nonprofits and for-profits, they're teamed up with the census and we just encourage everyone to take part. Okay. And we at ThinkTech are a partner, and I must tell you that it's been a pleasure being with both of you as usual, and we'll see you next month. Census will be back with us, but in the meantime, if you have a neighbor that hasn't registered, if you know anybody, call the number, and we are delighted, and hopefully we can reach 100% before it's over, before September. So... Thank you, Jesus and Annie Mae. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure being with you. Thank you so much, Ms. Marsha. We're very happy to be journeying this with, with you. Thank you for being there. Thank you so much, Ms. Marsha. <laughs> Aloha, and we'll see you next time.